Okay, so for today's video, I wanted to point out that um, what you see here might look familiar because I dealt with it in a video that I posted earlier, okay? Uh, there are these things called parabolas. Another term that you might hear it called is a quadratic function, and they look like this, okay? Uh, AX squared plus BX plus C. And what's the A and the B and the C besides letters of the alphabet? Uh, the A and the B and the C are particular numbers that go along with whatever that function happens to be, okay? All right, and uh, what do parabolas look like? They have either this shape opening up or this one opening down, either the lowest or the highest point in whatever case it is, is called the vertex, and it opens up or down, all based on whether that number, that multiplier, that coefficient of x squared is positive or negative, okay? And we, we're interested in finding the vertex in either case, and there's a formula that does that for us. Okay, so now that's, that's reviewed all that's covered in another video. Uh, when you do the assignments and you look in the book and so on, there's, there's this other form that you come across, and it wouldn't be right for me to just leave that out altogether. Uh, I, I didn't want to mention it all at once and give you all these formulas in one video, so I'm breaking it up, and I'm going to tell you about the alternate form here, okay? So you see this thing, uh, a number a times x minus some other number h all squared plus some other number k, that's also a parabola. It will have either this opening up shape just like that or opening down with a vertex, all depending on if this number right there is positive or negative, okay? Uh, so why bother with the alternate form? Well, if you have it in this form, if that's just what's right in front of you, then you can read where the vertex point is, like right out of that. The vertex is H and K, all right? Uh, that's it. It's H, X minus, whatever that number is, that's the X coordinate of the vertex, and then K, that's the Y coordinate. You don't have to do any math. You know, with this other one, you have to do all this math to get the vertex of that. Okay, all right. Now, that is just all a matter of fact, all right? Let's try to do a problem. Uh, it, here's a kind of generic, typical example. Let's give the vertex of this. All right. And I'd say, well, that does, it's built just like that. Um, I can read the vertex right out of the numbers present in that function. Okay. Uh, so what was that? Let's, let's write something next to this. What was that form? that I had on the other page, uh, f of x is equal to some number a x minus h squared plus k. Uh, yeah, what did it say? That the vertex in that case is h and k. And yeah, we got something that looks more or less like that. You might be bothered that that says x minus h, like there's gotta be a minus. And this says x plus 3, but uh, what are you subtracting if you really see a plus right there? You're subtracting negative 3, okay? So if you really want to, you know, if, if it's not natural or intuitive for you to realize that h is negative 3, then you can go ahead and you can say, look, that plus means if I want it to look like this, it's going to be x minus negative 3. What's x minus negative? What happens when you subtract a negative? You end up adding. So I can make it completely compatible with this formula. Okay? All right. So what's our answer going to be? What's the vertex of that? It's a parabola that opens up. Why do I know that? Well, because this constant is a 2, and it's positive and we saw on the other side of the paper that there will be a parabola that opens up in that case. In the vertex, this point right there at the very bottom, if you were to draw the graph, 
is going to be negative 3 and 5. So this point right there is at negative 3 for x, 5 for y. If you were to graph it, that's where it would be. Okay? All right, now I think if, if you're going to learn some math, uh, you, you might as well learn to be flexible about it. And if the questions look different and you learn different formulas, you might as well learn how to connect them together. So uh, consider this. Consider this next question where it says, give the vertex of that, which as soon as you read this, you might say, well, we just did that. Okay. But I say some other way. Uh, can you think flexibly about like some other way we talked about parabolas, we talked about their formulas, what they look like, what the equation looks like? Can you think of some other way? And can we get the same answer doing it the other way? Okay, so how about this? If I multiply all that out and do all the combining I can, I think I could turn this into something like this, okay? Again, just, just to be flexible about it and show you that I understand it no matter how I end up doing it, all right? And I encourage you to do that same thing. You prove to yourself that no matter how what the problem looks like, you can understand it one way or another, or no matter how it asks you to do it or whatever. So let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, how do you do x plus 3 squared? That would be, well, what's it mean to square something? Uh, to square something means when we multiply by itself. So this is really this. And then how do we multiply x plus 3 times x plus 3? We use FOIL multiplication. And I don't mind reviewing FOIL multiplication. It's not really a topic in our class, but if you need to review how you actually multiply this and get that, then I can make a video and all you gotta do is ask. But anyway, I get to here. And then now the two multiplies everything that you see in there. So I'm gonna get, let's see, two x squared plus 12 x plus 18. Okay, all that plus 5. And I'll, I'll reduce it to like this final thing. Uh, f of x is, here's this other form, this other way I could write this thing. 2x squared plus 12x and 18 and 5, that's going to be 23. So we say 23. Okay. So, you know, is this the same thing as that? Yes question was give the vertex some other way than we did up there so look at that how would you find the vertex of this kind of thing right there do you know the formula or if, if you don't know it can you at least go find it somewhere uh, can you back up the video and figure out where the formula that gives the vertex of something that looks like that is uh, the vertex of this ax squared plus bx plus c is negative opposite b over 2a we take that x coordinate, we plug it in to the function to get the y coordinate, and that's the vertex. Let's see if we can confirm that answer. Get that same. We know that's right, so let's see if we can get to work. All right, so let's see. I got that's a, b, and c. So like a is two, b is twelve, c is twenty-three, and the vertex is going to be as I had written down on the other side of the page. Negative b over 2a, opposite of b, whatever b is over 2a. Uh, and I just, I'll just take that number and I'll, I'll just, for now, I'm going to put that I'm going to sub it into this and see what I get for the y coordinate, okay? So let's see. What are we going to get if we do opposite b over 2a? I'll get opposite was b, b is 12. Okay, and then what's 2 times a? That's going to be 4. Okay, and there you go. I don't know what that number is yet. Let's, let's wait on it. I'm going to put question mark for now. We'll figure it out, though. Uh, all right, so what's negative 12 over 4? That would be 
uh, negative 3. Okay, negative 3. Uh, are we correct so far to say that the x coordinate of the vertex should be negative 3? Yep, correct so far. And then what would we get if we plug negative 3 into this? All right, well, here's how you do it. Uh, let's see, I gotta take negative 3 for x, I gotta put it into all that. So I get 2 times negative 3 squared plus 12 times negative 3 plus 23. Okay, and then, all right, negative 3 squared, that's gonna be 9. Okay, negative 3 times itself, 9 times 2, that's going to be 18, that's negative 36, and that's plus 23. Okay, so take 18 minus 36 plus 23, and you will find that that turns out to be 5. All right, okay, pretty, I mean, once you got the numbers right in front of you, pretty easy to do the math, and that is confirmation of my answer up there so you know it doesn't matter how you do it i you know not really okay but you could be presented with either situation i gave you both formulas and i wanted to show you that you know we can do it either way that we feel inclined all right i can get the same answer it's a math question there's only one answer to a math question if i do it one way and get one answer and i find some other way and I do it correctly, I'd have to get the same answer, all right? Okay, so I just wanted those two problems to be a summary of the, the two formulas that you come across on the assignments. Anyway, so if there's anything I need to do to fill in the gaps, let me know. We do more videos. Uh, from here, I'm going to leave it up to you, though.